Okay, so as part of the Water Sports Trends and Gadgets Conference at the Balearic Yacht Show, one of our panelists, Flightboard, uh, put together a little film of someone's experience for the first time ever going on a flight board so we can see exactly what it's like and what it involves. So enjoy, and here it is. <laughs> Hi, I'm Julian from Flightboard. We're with Mike. We're going to test these three boards out. So we have the Air, the Standard, and the Pro. Uh, he might not test the Pro today, but we're going to get him on the Air, and uh, he's going to hopefully transition to the, to the Standard board in a couple minutes. So we're going to give Mike a briefing and uh, get him out in the water. He's done about 30 minutes already, and he's already up and foiling. Here we go. Flatboard is where technology meets the modern sporting of the future. So this is Flatboard's propulsion unit. This is what's under the water, keeping you uh, afloat and f actually foiling and flying over the water. So this unit here is our motor. And what's pretty interesting about uh, our product and unique is that we have a unibody fuselage. So the motor is together with the wings, uh, allowing for less drag and more efficiency over the water. I'm just waiting. <laughs> well, the, the, the ride is great fun. You know, I'm a sort of middle-aged man going through a midlife crisis. It's perfect, you know. It presses all the right buttons of exhilarating. Lots of exercise. I mean, I've, I've done about an hour and my, I can feel it. My body's tired. And obviously, it's, it's you know, we all want to take the next step into the, into the future. And the next step on, on, on the water is foils, whether it's windsurfing, boats, or foiling boards. And it's great fun, a really good entry into foiling. Uh, welcome to the Balearic Yacht Show. You have just tuned in to the Water Sports Trends and Gadgets Digital Conference. Here with me, we have three experts from businesses. Uh, we have uh, Katja from Flightboard Europe. Uh, we have Roxanne from Superyacht Tenders and Toys. And we've Hi. got Tom from EOS Tenders and Toys. Uh, guys, if you'd like to introduce yourself, go for it. If we start with Tom. Morning, everybody. Yeah, my name's Tom Sell, uh, the owner of EOS Tenders and Toys based here in Mallorca. Um, yeah, passing on to Katja. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Hi, everyone. My name is Katja Burkhardt. I'm the general manager for Flightboard in Europe, based out of Amsterdam, close to the beaches, the Netherlands. <laughs> and hello, everybody. I'm Roxanne Ducree. So I am the sales and rental representative of Super Yacht Tenders and Toys, and I'm based in Monaco. Okay, brilliant guys. So, uh, over the course of the conference, uh, do ask your questions in the chat box uh, and we will be tuning in when this goes live uh, to answer those questions. So, uh, let's dive in. So, let's begin on sustainability. So, uh, by this point, consumers are really conscious about sustainability uh, and what businesses are doing to address that um, in their own businesses. So, um, if we start with Tom, uh, what do you do in your business to to address the whole sustainability? Um, well, we have like uh, so it's sort of 
a CSR policy, so corporate social responsibility. So we've actually got a group of businesses here um, that we run. Um, one's a shipping business, one's uh, EOS Tenders and Toys, and we have a storage business as well. And we basically are doing things like uh, there's a plant for the planet. So every client that has a, every invoice that we do, they would plant a tree for the planet. They, those sort of ideas where you're just, uh, we're trying to base it around some, some actions that actually count, if that makes sense. And you can sort of see, see it mounting up so a customer can actually have an effect on, on, on a different sort of charity or, or event that we're sponsoring as well. So yeah, we, do, we basically do that and uh, we support a lot of our local Mediterranean type charities for Save the Med, looking to you know, look after the Mediterranean Sea, all sorts of different things, beach cleanups, as much as we can, basically. Okay, and, and Tatra at Flightboard? Yeah, thanks. So uh, obviously Flightboard has an electric hydrofoil uh, product out on the market and uh, that, that in itself is a very clean technology. Uh, there's no exhaust, hardly any wake. So it's very marine friendly technology and we're actually quite excited about, you know, the convergence that is taking place in electricity uh, um, being applied to sort of water, water marine friendly uh, technologies overall. And uh, with that hydrofoiling technology and sort of the convergence of those two, we're really uh, sort of at the midst of, uh, of, a, of a clean solution that is really fun to enjoy and a uh, super exciting experience. And Flightboard itself as a company is, is really striving to be sort of uh, very um, uh, ocean friendly. Uh, we're supportive of local initiatives in Australia and other regions as well. Uh, so uh, I, I think there's a lot to do for all of us in the industry and uh, uh, happy to be a part of that. And Roxana, Supiot Tenders and Toys. So it's, it's a bit of a mix of um, both Katia and Tom, like we, so as a company, we, uh, so we give eco-friendly brochures, we reuse the packaging where possible, we go to the beach cleanup, we really support um, uh, lots of charity also, and um, a lot of electric um, and um, eco-friendly association. And we really, really use, try to, to, yeah, help as much as we can. We also so supply more and more electric toys. So of course there are some clients that still request a jet ski, but even there we can see jet ski, uh, electric jet ski. So we really push for electric toys, um, which are also quality products and uh, from trusted manufacturers. Um, and in a way also we, um, do a lot of demos and uh, test uh, for the clients to see the, the reality of the product and also the possibilities. And so then they can be uh, aware of what they are buying and uh, um, that we can see also with electric uh, toys that the noise is very reduced too. And that's also a big impact, especially when you've got all the yachts at the anchor. So that's also something else that we, uh, we are focused on. So. Yeah, I love these folks on uh, on events uh, and uh, and partnering with charities to to kind of as a collective uh, build this this whole movement and get. I mean, re really, it helps your businesses as well as helping consumers see exactly uh, what happens. And rather than pitching, uh, we saved half a ton of carbon dioxide going into yeah. the atmosphere to convert that into planting a thousand trees. I think people. Uh, people see that a lot more easily and um, and that's a really smart way of doing things uh, so our next question is on safety so as as tech gets better and better um, <laughs> there's always people designing these new toys and they say right okay now we have this this level of ability we can go faster um, deeper whatever um, and so how do you kind of draw the line between a responsibility for safety um, and balancing that out with with fun. Um, let's let's go straight to capture this time, and then uh, we'll jump to Tom and, and Roxanne. Yeah, thanks. Uh, again, I mean, super important. It's it's so great to enjoy, and uh, but you want to be safe, you know, getting out there and, and having fun. And uh, for for us, it's really uh, three elements that that stand out. It's it's the hardware side of the design of our products 
really no compromise in the quality there in sort of the design of the, the carbon boards, the aluminum uh, foil, uh, again, the carbon wings, uh, which really make for a very safe product, no compromise. And, and it also adds to sort of really a, a design look and feel with, with, with that finish as well, but, but it really creates a safe, a safe product. Um, that sort of mixed with uh, uh, software packaging sort of um, for you to have a tilt, tilt sensor uh, when you're falling over. You, you, there are all these, uh, these different um, elements there that will, allow, will never allow for you to be in the water with a live propeller, which is something obviously you want to try to avoid, uh, not get, your, uh, get, get stuck in there. Obviously, there's a propeller duck, uh, a guard as well around the propeller. Uh, for that for that purpose, but but certainly that software is very advanced uh, to make sure that you're safe on the water. And um, the other one in Europe, I think, and uh, also in the Balearics, uh, very prominent is is the schools. And and you know, uh, safety comes with you know um, understanding the boundaries and and understanding sort of precautions that you can take getting out on the world, water the first time. E falling is super exciting. It's a great way to fly over the water. But you can get up to very high speeds. Uh, we've now sort of recorded up to 75 kilometers per hour on the water. So that's super fast when you're sort of e-foiling, foiling above the water and you want to make sure you're safe. So obviously we recommend people to wear, you know, impact vest and helmets when they're going that fast and certainly when they're training up uh, initially. But the flight schools uh, play uh, a super important role there. Uh, a flight school in Mallorca uh, Zeus actually uh, took one of the uh, uh, participants to the uh, Balear Giat show out for her first session. Uh, and I think we're going to see some recordings in this, uh, in this conference of that. Uh, very exciting first run. And you'll see, you know, he got up and running and uh, flying in about uh, 30 minutes. Uh, but, you know, the schools are really important. So, you know, flight school in Mallorca, flight schools on Ibiza. And uh, you'll find flight schools uh, throughout Europe. And uh, it's a really important aspect of safety to get familiarized with the products. And obviously, yacht captains and crews can play a, a very important role there. So we're always keen to help the crews uh, get up to speed on you know, um, uh, charters and, and, and uh, uh, guests and owners of the yacht to be safe with, uh, with their toys. Uh, so that's another really important aspect as well. And uh, you know, a lot of online tools, videos, tutorials, uh, a flight app on your phone, so you can always look up the, those videos and those uh, manual guidelines as well. So yeah, safety is hugely important for us. Okay, Tom? Well, I think Kat just kind of uh, nailed it, really, in terms of, uh, obviously, obviously, Kat is selling one product, we're selling a whole bunch of different things, so we try to um, offer as much training courses as we can through those various suppliers. Um, but yeah, 100% training the crew, training everyone on board to use the equipment correctly. I mean, we sell equipment all the way down to be used in as far reaches as Antarctica and the Arctic. So it's all about safety in terms of use of equipment correctly and the safety equipment on board the, the, the tenders or the toys that we're selling. So yeah, I really can't say much more apart from training, 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 and, um, and information really, and making sure. I guess another thing that we found very useful as well has been um, the use of platforms and stuff. So, so we sell a product called Naughty Boy, um, and they're hugely useful when it comes for training uh, guests and, and crew to start using different types of uh, equipment. For example, sea bob training and stuff like that would be very good with their sea dock product. So you can actually have a crew member at water level with a, with a charter guest doing a proper training course before using any of the equipment. So yeah, training and info is what we would recommend. Same for us. <laughs> so <laughs> we organize a lot of days and proper training uh, before the customer use. Um, so first to make, to make sure the clients can test the product first, but also so then they are fully aware of the limitations and the capabilities of the toys. So um, this is, we really, really push for this, but then there are also some videos, like step-by-step -step videos, how to use the products. Um, and then we try to summarize for each toy a bit how to, how to have a proper use and uh, what are the safety instructions to really be aware. And we always recommend helmets and impacts best. So um, every, every time, like every time there is, um, there is a purchase or a request for especially the, 
also the electric boards, um, we know that they can go really fast. So we don't want any anything to happen to a guest. So we really, and the trainings, we do them with helmets and, and vests. So that's very can, important. Can I maybe ask a follow-up question here? Um, I'm curious in your experience as well. Obviously, a lot of these toys and gadgets are family friendly uh, to enjoy. Uh, what is what are your sort of advices on age restrictions and, and safety for families to enjoy uh, the various toys uh, that are out there? Um, so it depends on the toys. Uh, you can have some limitations of your toys. You can uh, put a restriction. Um, for example, the awake electric boards, you have different modes. So there's the kids mode. Uh, eco-friendly, um, then they sports and extreme. So obviously we won't put an extreme mode when a, a kid is using this one. So that is really something that is very, very cool. Um, that's a very good um, um, specification of the board and that allows the, all the families to use that. Um, again, CBOBs, they have a depth that is limited. Uh, there is a limitation. Well, and then we will recommend the first model for the kids because it goes slower. So we really try to adapt also according to the request and who's going to use the toys, what's, what's the best. Um, so because we don't want anything to happen also, obviously. Um, and for electric boards also, you have the safety key. So when you fall, uh, for on some boards, when you fall, then it shuts off the board. Yeah, of and uh, that is very important. Um, some clients, the, the kids, they are, you know, they are teenagers. They don't want to have this because it, oh, it's annoying between the, the, the legs. And then if they fall, the board will just keep on going because when you fall, you press, you, you grab something and you press the um, accelerator, so the trigger. So um, um, again, there, it's very important to have the, the safety key. And uh, yes, we, we just recommend according to who's going to use what's the best and we try to do packages of course um looking at the when i do the rent um, i have re rental inquiries obviously i will ask um if it's for a charter guest who who's going to chart the yacht who's going to use the toys and um even the captain come to me and ask okay what can be fun for the for the kids um, so obviously i won't go for something that is uh, too dangerous or fast and uh, even like too, too big for them. So that's Actually, what, what, what is what are your restrictions for children on the flight board? How does that work for you guys? Yeah, yeah, we recommend 15 years old uh, for using flight board. Um, uh, obviously, uh, we have 20 different gears. Uh, you can go up to those, you know, uh, 45, 50 kilometers plus in speed, but yeah, obviously, you know, speed, speed restrictions right. recommended uh, there. But what's really great about our product range as well, we have an inflatable board, our flight board air, which is, um, if you think about it, it has a bumper, uh, uh, which is which is a softer a softer edge than our carbon boards have. So obviously, as Rexan was saying, we'd always sort of go into a conversation with uh, you know a potential customer or a yacht captain about which of our products would be a good fit for for a specific uh, specific uh, customer. And uh, typically, the Flightboard Air is actually a really good setup for for family friendly uh, enjoyment. Um, and it also has to do with the, the wing settings there. Are, if you use the bigger wings, it's a more stable uh, riding experience compared to using the very fast flyer wing, which is uh, very much uh, built for speed and, and you know, those tight uh, carves uh, turns. So, uh, yeah, I think as, as you were saying, it's very much a conversation, uh, very specific usually with, uh, with each individual, uh, what works for them. But um, yeah, the Flightboard Air is a really good option, uh, typically for a younger, uh, younger user. Yeah. Yeah, guys, that's that's really cool actually all, all, all of that so uh let's go into 2020 so uh, uh i'm not going to say the dreaded word uh but it's obviously presented uh plenty of challenges plenty of change um could you guys i'll, I'll start with roxanne on this one um ha, has there been kind of uh, uh just changes in the way the industry operates uh, that is that may ne never actually change back um, and how do you kind of go about marketing the products as well as, um, as well as actually the logistics of getting the toys to the boat or, um, and everything around that? So definitely 2020 uh, season with COVID has been a very drastic impact on the industry. 
uh, we could see it also with a number of charters that were cancelled and the owners being more conscious about uh, their expenses. Um, so they would prefer maybe to rent some toys instead of purchasing because they 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 didn't know the sh the, the long term of the the, ter the sorry the duration of the the season. So um, also because of lockdown and restrictions, everything a bit the season started a bit late, but suddenly. So also um, if you you make an order for a new toy, either you have stock or not, and then. Um, that was maybe better to rent. Um, and we just, um, yeah, we did a lot of uh, marketing. We, we also focused a lot on, on relationship with our clients also. That's very important. And we were, during COVID especially, we were really taking um, news of all our clients and making sure like they are safe first. Uh, because um, after all, like we're not just a company selling, 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 but we we really base our business on the relationship we develop, and uh, that's how clients just come back to us too, and um, so that was very important for us. So this is what we've done, um, and um, in the office in the UK, because it's a bit different. I'm in Monaco, and I'm in the office in Monaco, but days on the mid, and I had um, also an operations person. So. Maxim this summer with me to to help for all the logistic and is um, still helping and delivering the toys a bit everywhere. So even this he was driving the van till Croatia. <laughs> um, but um, in the UK, um, they are, all the team is in the UK and in the office we all have um, hand sanitizer and um, distances and masks and even now they have to go back working from home. Um, so very very particular year and also facing the clients also it changed a lot yeah, yeah there's, there's plenty of challenges in in always uh, in all areas and the it's amazing how communication has surfaced as such a, a massive business driver and maintaining that PR with um, with the clients is is obviously the long-term goal um, but it's been it's been really hard to do um, I'll pass to Tom now uh, for the same question yeah so uh 2020 yeah what a what a crazy ride that's been so far um i think you know i think charters has been the number one thing that's been really hit quite hard especially in the balearics i think a, a lot of owners have been using their boats quite substantially as much as they could obviously we've had huge lockdowns whereby no no brits could come to mallorca and then less germans which is the typical sort of clientele for this part of the world so, um, yeah, we've just seen charters really drop off massively. I mean, we, we have, having said that, I think a lot of the owners have been buying a lot of equipment as well. They've been sat around on their boats or maybe their kids have been sat around on their boats looking around going, what can we do? And let's, let's use the boat more. And therefore, they, they, you know, we've been selling quite a bit of uh, a few sort of sets of toys to all sorts of different boats as well here. So I think um, all in all, it's been... I mean, we're hoping, obviously, for a, for a change in the coming year, but I think we're sort of set also in this mode for at least another sort of six to 12 months, I would say, depending on, obviously, what happens next. But, yeah, so 2020 has been interesting. We are, thank God, uh, all uh, doing okay. I think the yachting industry has been pretty solid um, business compared to, for example, the hotel business here in Mallorca. I think there's... Uh, about 122 uh, hotels for sale currently in, in Mallorca. <laughs> so it sort of gives you an indication of how bad things have got. Um, but yeah, thank God for uh, the yachting industry is all I can say. Okay, and, and catch it with Flightboard. And uh, I suppose people are alone on it, right? It's, it's one person at a time. Uh, I, I suppose that's fairly good for isolation. But in, in relation to yachting, uh, how's that? How's 2020 looked, really? Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, uh, it, it's very much, much sort of the fly out of isolation and finding your freedom again, which is if, if you look at sort of what's happened in, in Europe in particular, obviously there's been this tremendous unexpected seasonality, which was related to, you know, whole regions and, and territories being on lockdown and even, even you know, uh, as deemed saved uh, activities as, you know, flight boarding was 
a very clear one and a half meters distance, so very much within those uh, typical boundaries uh, that are set to be to, to, to stay safe. Um, what we've seen is uh, incredible peaks in in sort of um, in the summer season. Obviously, the spring was very difficult because a lot of the regions uh, were actually closed. People were as restricted to staying indoors. At the same time, in, in sort of Northern Europe, people were still enjoying these individual water sports. And, and actually, I think it's, it's still very healthy to you know, be outside, be active, meet your friends at a safe distance and have these shared experiences. It's also really good for your mental sanity if you think about it, you know, especially in these, in these unprecedented uh, times. At the same time, we're a global business. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, we came into the market in 2019, but we've been sort of uh, um, uh, selling flight boards across the globe. And so it's really, it's really varied uh, from, from area to area. But I think one of the, the trends that we're seeing and the Balearic Yacho is really uh, tapping into that as well is, is the fact that we've gone from this very global connected economy with a lot of us, you know, traveling to, to different areas to do business, to enjoy. Our, our off time with family and friends, uh, we're now much more sort of localized and, and, and sort of enjoying experiences closer to home. And uh, yeah, as, as Tom was saying, I think, uh, thank God for the marine industry. Uh, it's, it's been a great escape for a lot of people, uh, especially if you can't travel, to have that option to still go outside and enjoy these experiences, to be on your yacht and uh, enjoy that time with family and friends and, and go out there and fly away uh, for a moment. and, and disconnect. Um, so I, I think that's, that's really special as well. All right. So as, as businesses, there's been the ob obvious challenges, but have we also seen uh, consumers actually want a different set of toys and, and, and uh, change what they would normally pick uh, because of, of things like restrictions in place? Uh, and have you seen any movement toward um, specific toys? And, uh, <laughs> I know Kat just going to stand there and go, yeah, everyone went flight board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what can I say? It's actually true. But maybe, but maybe uh, at a broader scale, I think uh, foiling is so exciting. Uh, and, right. and actually in all water sports, I think that's a huge trend uh, and it will continue to be so uh, for the coming years. And obviously we're in an e-foiling business and very specific products there. Uh, very proud of these these beautiful boards. But I think foiling in itself is is really for for water sports. It's it's here to stay, and it's it's adding so much more to surf, sail, uh, boating. Uh, you know, you see these beautiful electric boats coming out now with 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 hydrofoil technology, and uh, it's just it's just amazing to see. So very excited about uh, that in general. Yeah, it certainly adds a new. It, it's like the uh, the next dimension in water sports. Like you normally can kite surf, then kite surf with a hydrofoil on. It's a, a completely different feeling. It really I, is. I fairly recently went on. Um, I, I'm normally on wakeboards, uh, but I went on an air chair with a with a hydrofoil on, and it's just a completely different experience. And it's it sounds beautiful. It's just a, a light whistle going through the water. It it is amazing. Um, but in terms of consumers and going to other toys, uh, let's jump to, to, uh, to Tom. Uh, to yeah, I, I mean, I'd come back to our, our biggest seller really has been uh, platforms again this year. It's just been, I think people are looking to expand their space on board. That, you know, it offers so many different options, you know, more sort of beach club setups. Uh, again, how, how do we use our space on board? Because we're going to be spending more time on our yacht owners coming on, looking at it, and just trying to sort of expand out the space that they have. Um, obviously, there's been, like, like you've said, I mean, there's been a huge demand on outdoor goods. So things like, I think, SUPS this year, for example, that you've had the stock on them has been really difficult to get. And even down to sort of bicycles. I mean, if I, if I go down to my local bike, I try to get a bike for my son for Christmas, and there's a three-month waiting list for a sort of for a Trek bike, it's crazy. I think what everything is 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 being bought up. I heard one figure that uh, tennis in the United States had gone up 20% uh, this year. So it's, it's all outdoor activities. And I think people just using everything. But we've certainly noticed um, the idea towards more platforms. And then all, you know, we've sold a lot of uh, the Radin circles this year as well. It's been a good, good seller for us. Um, 
Flight is obviously got their own uh, sort of dealership and flight school here in Mallorca, so we don't tend to sell that many of those, but we obviously very nice to speak to Patrick about that after the show. Um, but yeah, so basically platforms, I would say, is, has been a, a big seller for us. Okay, and, and Roxanne? So, um, as we saw a lot of uh, interest into electric um, boards, so um, either uh, flight, lift, uh, wake, resin. So we had a lot of uh, interest into the electric boards, um, but also interestingly went into a lot of adventurous and uh, amphibious toys too. And uh, foiling, it's uh, yeah, so foiling, bo foiling boards, but also foiling tenders. Um, our clients really, really get it. Um, attracted by the the adventures and um, amphibious and the, the fact that like having a landing craft going on the shore having motorbikes um, so we have all kind of crazy crazy requests which are really really exciting because ourselves at super tennis and toys we are really into sports so water sports but also all kind of sports so we get a lot of pleasure uh, supplying these crazy requests so um, but of course, we saw also that the, um, the client um, this summer, it was most mainly the owners on the boat that wanting to spend time there uh, with their family and seeing how they could um, have fun, but also each time have a different, different fun and different feelings. So also there, it was very various uh, requests, but a lot of extreme. Okay, brilliant. So. Um, we're, we've talked a lot about the, the challenges and the changes um, in 2020. Uh, I, li I always like to finish on looking forward. Um, so the next three, the next five years, uh, we're already seeing changes in, uh, in charter and there's, there's quite a boom in the, in the charter space and new territories like Australia open up. Uh, but also uh, with these new toys and new regulations, I feel like the the whole business landscape and the and the demands of consumers has shifted, uh, and so in the next three to five years, do you see any um, big changes or big uh, trends uh, that we're going to see arise? Uh, let's start with let's start with Catcher. I have a I have a feeling <laughs> I know what she's going to say, uh, but go for it. <laughs> Well, I think we started the conversation talking about sustainability as well. And I think uh, one of the opportunities of this crisis is we can actually build a more sustainable future for all of us, right? Uh, it's, it's a time to reset and rethink. Uh, so I'm excited about these, these clean tech uh, developments that are happening in, in both electric converting into water sports uh, uh, toys and activities. Um, and, and I think you're actually seeing that with, you know, um, regulators as well and port authorities and people are really looking for ways to sort of develop an area that is that is very marine friendly and that is sort of uh, conserving what we have and it was great to see you know dolphins coming back into venice uh, early in the in, in the corona crisis and things like that that's precious and uh, i think i think we all appreciate that that beauty and uh, uh, the fact that uh, you know we're, we're all sort of part of this this beautiful planet and uh, for, for many of us uh, a playground on the water as well uh, but uh, we want to maintain it as it is and for our future generations as well so obviously i'm excited to be part of a clean technology company uh with with a product that is highly innovative and and very much at that convergence uh and uh i'm excited about some of the new uh, products coming out uh, later in january so keep an eye out for developments with flightboards uh you can expect new wings and um uh, i can light uh, lift a little veil here that uh you can expect a smaller board from us as well in the future so Exciting uh, developments to look forward to. There we go. Thanks, Tom. Fantastic answer. Nice one, Katja. Uh, Roxanne? So uh, people are being a bit more conservative, uh, are being a bit more conservative um, as the season is unknown. Um, but as moving forward uh, with the interest uh, of Explorer Yachts a lot, um, there will be more expedition toys and tenders on demand, I reckon. And also, you know, we supply snowmobiles and uh, submarines. Um, so um i think it really going forward um it will be more and more um expedition adventurous toys exploration toys uh, and tenders so we are looking forward to it okay and so I, I i agree um that the expedition world and the explorer world is definitely what people want i mean if you just look at yourself 
over the whole lockdown period, you're just sort of thinking, God, I wish I'd done that, or shouldn't I have done this? And it's just time to go and do all that stuff that, um, that, that people have always wanted to do. So we, we as a company, actually EOS stands for Expedition Yachts Operations and Services. So we set up and we have another department called EOS Expeditions that take people to all over the world to the most beautiful places. And we tend, as our company is tenders, we tend to do all the supply for all of that. So we're seeing, we're seeing quite a big demand into, you know, expedition cruise lines. There's, there's lots and lots of people wanting to get further and further afield. So therefore the toys and everything becomes much more multifunctional, um, a bit more rugged, more useful, a little less glamorous and a bit more adventurous. And I think that's shown pretty clearly in the types of people that are making the money these days. It seems to be uh, a lot of young sort of tech entrepreneurs who are able to invest in, in, in these boats. And you can see a massive trend change from, you know, glamorous super yachts of the uh, 90s and noughties and to now much more explorer type vessels. So, yeah, I would agree. We are going down. We're going to go and explore the world, I think. Hey, fantastic. All right. All right, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, you've been at the Balearic Yacht Show. Uh, this is the Ward Sports Trends and Gadgets Conference. Uh, Tom, Catcher and Roxanne uh, have been tuned in uh, throughout this webinar to answer to your, uh, to your questions live. Uh, but also, look, if you've got them uh, questions or inquiries for them, uh, do get in touch. They're happy to chat to you all. Uh, and thank you for coming along. And, and thank you to our panelists. Uh, and bye for now.